Hi, this is Elizabeth and today I'll be walking you through the basics of an open telemetry collector and how you can set up a very simple open telemetry collector pipeline for your demo application in your system. So let's dive right into it. One of the best ways of explaining open telemetry collector is to think of it as an agent or a piece of software that sits right between your application code and the observability backend to which you are sending your telemetry data to. But then there's also a textbook definition to it which it is used multiple times in the documentation etc. Let's uh, give it a check as well. So the textbook definition of open telemetry collector is as a vendor agnostic implementation of how to receive, process and export telemetry data. Now let's see how it fits in the pipeline, how it performs all the functions etc. Okay. So open telemetry collector as we defined previously sits right between your server or the application code and the observability backend. It collects telemetry data from your server and then after performing certain operations, if necessary, it pushes it or it transports it back to your observability backend, right? Now let's look at some of the important parts of an open telemetry collector which keeps the collector running. So the first important part is the receiver. As the name suggests, it's used for collecting telemetry data from various sources and then pushing it to the next step, which is the processor. So the uh, interesting part is that a receiver can receive data from more than one source. For example, it can receive data over o OTLP, Jaeger, Prometheus, etc. And next about the processor. This is one of the most essential piece of an open telemetry collector. And I would say this is also the best benefit of having a collector in your pipeline. That is whatever telemetry data that you're collecting, you have the ability to perform operations in it and to transform the data that you're getting and to output it into maybe other format, maybe add some attributes, etc., so that it is more likely to how you want it. And it is easier to process and use the data that you've obtained in your backend, right? So that is where a processor comes into picture. There are various different kinds of processors, but some of the most commonly used processors include a batch processor whose primary function is to group the data, group telemetry data before it is exported. Similarly, we have a memory limit processor, which prevent, which prevents the collector from taking too much memory and prevents it from crashing. Similarly, we have an attributes processor. So whatever telemetry data you're sending, if you want to plug in some attributes into it, update it with some extra attributes which cannot be done in the application code part of it, a processor is very helpful for that. We also have a tails sampling processor which includes again tail sampling etc and also filtering steps in the processing part of it which is basically used to reduce the amount of telemetry data that is being ingested to your uh, backend and to reduce the costs associated with observers. The last step is exporters. The exporter is responsible for transporting the processed telemetry data into the observability backend of your choice. So just like the receiver, the exporter is also capable of transporting the processed telemetry data to any exporter or more than one exporter of your choice. Right? So for the context of this video, we'll be using Signals as our observability backends. And now let's see how we can spin up an open telemetry collector in a very simple fashion so that you can just get started with your demo application. Now let's look at that. Uh, this is my demo application. It is a very basic flask app and I've already instrumented it using the basic open telemetry or manual instrumentation that we follow. There's no change there. Collector comes after that step. So let's just look at how I've instrumented it quickly. So. Uh, we have a trace provider, we have a trace exporter. Similarly, we have a metric provider, metric exporter, and we also have a logger. Everything is as usual. The only change that happens is for the OTLP endpoint. We have set our OTLP endpoint to a uh, point to our collector and to a point to a specific port, which is 4317. We'll get to that later. Uh, the best practice is always to use environment uh, variables. Now let's look at what happens in our collector config. So our collector config has all the parts that we earlier mentioned, starting with the receiver and the OTLP receiver. The gRPC endpoint is at 4317. That is where we are sending data from our Flask app as well this one and then we have a HTTP endpoint as well but we are not using it uh, in the in our video right now and for the processors we've used, used the batch processor and added some attributes to that the memory limiter and we also have the attributes which are plugging in some attributes to every telemetry data which is emitted now we have the export so this is the endpoint where Cygnos is receiving telemetry data from our collector 
and depending upon your back end setup you will have to configure headers or authorization for it as with as what is required for the for the context of signals we'll just need an injection key uh, which is redacted here now the part of the pipelines we had mentioned before that it is possible for a collector to receive data from more than one receiver and export it to more than one backend right so this is where that configuration happens so here in this array of receivers we can have how many ever receivers we want we have to just make sure that it is already defined here previously then all the processors are defined here are listed here in an array similar with the exporters so this is the pipeline for traces similarly we have pipelines set up for metrics and logs as well so the entire application and the collector are set up as docker containers let's look at our docker compose file it's very basic we have a flask app running on port 5000 we also have an otl collector which is uh, exposing two ports so when i do a docker compose up i get both my containers up and running which is already done let's look at what happens right now so our project has two docker containers running one for our flask app and the other for our collector we can see logs, metrics, traces, everything coming to our collector. And from our collector, it is being transported to our backend, which is signals as we've configured in our setup already. You can also see both the ports being exposed here. Now let's look at how the telemetry data looks like in our backend. Okay. So our app name is Flask Demo. Service name is Flask Demo, sorry. And then uh, we have the list of all our traces here, which is being emitted by our application. You can see all our uh, telemetry data here. Similarly, we can check the check what happens for logs and metrics and all the other features that are available. So I hope you've understood how collector comes in the entire application pipeline and how you can make best use of the collector so that you can get telemetry data as you need for your use case. It's always the best and a recommended practice to use collectors in your application as well so that you have more control over the telemetry data that is flowing into your backend. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you.